Well, it's tick season. What are you going to do if your child gets bit by a tick and has fever, rash, or joint pain? I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to answer that question. Y'all know me, I'm Dr. B, and this is The Buzz on Lyme Disease. Lyme disease is a bacterial infection caused by Borrelia burgdorferi, fun name, which on this blood smear is those little spiral bacteria floating around and causing trouble with those red cells. This bacteria is passed to humans by ticks of the Ixodes family of ticks. There are several Ixodes species that can transmit Lyme disease, and lots of people will bring in a tick and say, hey, I just pulled this off my kid will it give them Lyme disease? And they hand over a mashed up lump of a bug and it's usually kind of difficult to tell what we're looking at. But let's see what these ticks look like and see if we can get some kind of hints here. Ixides scapularis, the black-legged deer tick, is the most common tick to transmit Lyme disease. This is what a typical Ixides adult female looks like. Eight legs, dark brown up front, with a light reddish brown back end. And it looks big in this picture, but these ticks are actually pretty small. Here's a comparison against a US dime. And for you non-Americans watching, this coin is about two centimeters wide, about maybe about 1.8 centimeters wide. Of course, that's the image of famous American actor Martin Sheen on there. Here's an adult female on a fingernail. And here's the same tick with a much smaller baby tick called a nymph. The nymph is about the size of a poppy seed, very small. Now this is important. While the adult female can transmit Lyme disease, most cases are actually transmitted by the nymph, by the baby tick, that little baby tick, which is so small that it's often not noticed and it looks completely different from the adult. So here's a summary of the sizes again against a dime. The big female, which causes about a quarter of the cases of Lyme disease, smaller and male next to that, which is mostly dark brown and doesn't often transmit Lyme disease. And the baby nymph is the third one over, which causes about three quarters of all cases of Lyme disease. And to the right of that is the larva, which is a tiny, tiny newborn tick, and that doesn't transmit Lyme disease at all. So that little nymph causes most of the problems, which is why many people don't recall ever seeing a tick or can't describe it well if they do see it because they're just so tiny. Finally, I want to show you this. Another problem with identifying ticks is that they look different depending on how much they've had to eat and will balloon up if they've been on there for multiple days. This is an Ixodes tick, and you can see it looks completely different uh, depending on where it is in its feeding cycle. It's going to be hard to tell if this is reddish brown or dark brown tick if it's been on there a long time, and that makes identification difficult. So prevention of all tick bites and doing regular tick checks is going to be key in preventing Lyme disease. Lyme disease is the most common disease transmitted by insects or arachnids in the United States. We often think of New England as being the hotbed for Lyme disease, and really it is. There is a lot of Lyme disease in New England. But everyone I speak to down here in Georgia says they know someone or their cousin had Lyme disease. And while we do definitely see it down here, the incidence of confirmed Lyme disease just is not as high as it is up in New England. Uh, but you can see on this map, those fancy northern states up there are just covered in Lyme disease. And there is a little bit of pink in Georgia, but it's a, lot, it's a much lower risk. Most cases are in kids between five and nine years, and those are the ones uh, running around out in the woods. So that makes sense. When someone is diagnosed with Lyme disease, the tick is usually attached for 36 hours or more. And the longer it's attached, the more likely transmission will occur. 36 hours is a day and a half, so doing a daily tick check will definitely cut down on transmission. Now, there are early and late signs of Lyme disease. The main early sign of Lyme disease is the classic bullseye rash called erythema migrans, and it shows up maybe 80% of the time. Typically, this rash appears in seven to 14 days, that's one to two weeks after the tick bite. But it can range from three days to 30 days. So it could, could be right away or it could take up to a month to show up. The rash starts with redness at the bite mark and then it, this slowly expands and will be over five centimeters in diameter. That's over two inches by the time it's, it's stopped growing. This area around the center mark often clears 
giving you this bullseye pattern. Usually the area is painless and not itchy, but some people do say it's a little bit tender. Keep in mind that the bullseye pattern doesn't always show up well, like here on this woman's neck, which just looks diffusely red. You don't see that bullseye pattern. And the bullseye pattern is not required for diagnosis. There are other early signs of Lyme disease besides the rash, including flu-like symptoms like fatigue, fever or chills, headache and muscle aches, joint pain, swollen lymph nodes near the area of the bite, and there may be some other serious issues like meningitis symptoms like headache and neck stiffness, facial nerve palsy where you can't move part of the face, and carditis uh, or heart inflammation that causes EKG changes, chest pain, and feelings of palpitations. These all may come on around the same time as the rash is developing or take a little bit longer to show up. Untreated Lyme disease can cause some late symptoms months or even years later, like chronic joint problems and all sorts of neurological problems. So hopefully we figure this out long before all of that happens. Clinical diagnosis is key, meaning that we diagnose it just from the history and from physical exam. And that should be a lot easier if we see that classic bullseye rash. It shows up most of the time. There are some blood tests that can be done, some antibody tests. You can look for DNA from the bacteria themselves. Um, however, if you do these very early, they may be negative. So sometimes if this is a confusing case, a doctor may have to order those tests more than once. As far as treatment, oral antibiotics are effective for Lyme disease, especially when they're given early. You should be able to treat the patient at home with these. Amoxicillin, yes, the pink bubble gum medicine we use for ear infections and strep throat will kill off the bacteria that cause Lyme disease. Cefuroxime is another oral drug that can be used in young kids. For older kids, we may use doxycycline. Uh, so we have a lot of different oral options for different ages or if there's an allergy to one medicine or, or another. For kids with those more serious brain or heart issues or Lyme disease that's gone undiagnosed for a long time, hospitalization and IV antibiotics may be required. But of course, our goal is to catch this disease early and not get to that stage. Like I always say, even more important than treating a disease is preventing it in the first place. So what we're going to want to do is prevent tick bites and remove them quickly so they don't transmit disease. Watch episode 18 of this podcast for information on preventing tick bites and preventing other insect bites and episode 36 on how to remove ticks properly. Most importantly, make sure you avoid areas with ticks in them like high grass and bushes. Wear protective clothing, tuck your pants into your socks or into your boots. Use tick repellent spray. My favorite for being effective and safe for children is picaridin. Ticks may still get up on you, so do a tick check all over, especially the legs and all the creases, anywhere where clothing bunches up on you, like behind the knees, in the groin, in the underarms, around your sides. Do this before you come inside the house. Also keep in mind that dogs and cats can carry ixodes, ticks. They don't usually get sick from Lyme disease, but they can bring these ticks into your home. So make sure your pets are protected from ticks as well. So if your child was recently bit by a tick, and now they have fever or rash or joint pain or headache or chills or anything like that, please contact me or contact your doctor. Complications from Lyme disease are rare, but much less likely if we take care of this disease quickly. Thanks for watching today. Like, subscribe, share. Y'all know me, I'm Dr. B, and this has been The Buzz on Parenting and Pediatrics. We'll see you next time.